Hey guys, Moms Against Medical Bullying. So if you're wondering what happened to my eyelid, it's um, poison ivy up there. My dog gets in poison ivy, then gets it on my face, and it's a good time. <laughs> Anyways, my mind is still um, excited about those, uh, thinking about molecules. <laughs> I'm sitting here all day thinking about molecules, you know, and uh, reading some articles um, about RNA and uh, thinking of it in terms of it's a molecule <laughs> and thinking of it in terms of they're injecting molecules into people um, that maybe have some type of enzymatic action or I don't know they're binding the proteins I don't know guys this all this medical mumbo jumbo is floating through my head like um you know what is the true purpose of that um yeah I know people are getting uh you know strokes and you know heart problems and blood clots and things like that and but I can't help but think that that's just uh what do you call it those are casualties in their experiment you know it's like when you run an experiment with rats and you say okay they're, they're trying to do something they're trying to change the genes or shut genes off or turn genes on as they say and uh you know some rats die you know some stroke out um those are just like casualties in their experiment it wasn't really the purpose of their experiment <laughs> you know i feel like obviously there's a deeper agenda I mean than just to kill people it's like you know using a bunch of people like it's kind of like a, a scientist's dream right to have the whole population at his at their hands to play around with their bodies and see what results you know take place um that's my line of thought about all that um I've been reading um in the champ versus pastor 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 <laughs> and i just wanted to read you guys um this one segment on fermentation that i feel like is really helping me because i read the first part of this book which is the champ uh no which is pastor plagiarist imposter and like it wasn't really helping me i kept having to read it over and over again but i feel like ethel douglas hume's writing is way more palatable like i can understand it better i'm gonna read this it says the champ bechamp excuse me taught that creoso in preventing the development of molds also checks the transformation of cane sugar so basically the uh molds don't develop and therefore the cane sugar doesn't get uh, inverted and then it says also creoso with or without prolonged contact with air prevents at one and the same time the formation of molds and the transformation of cane sugar. But from observation, it appears that once the molds are formed, creoso does not prevent their action. Drawing more conclusions from the effects of different salts, he stated, the influence of saline solutions is variable, not only according to the sort or kind of salt, but moreover, according to the degree of saturation and neutrality of these salts, the salts that prevent the transformation of cane sugar into glucose or grape sugar are generally the salts reputed to be antiseptic. In all cases, a certain minimum temperature is necessary for the transformation to take place. Thus, we see that in 1857, when fermentation was such a complete mystery that Pasteur, operating with albuminoid matters, including dead yeast, looked upon this yeast and other organisms as products of spontaneous generation. Bechamp had dispelled all uncertainty on the subject. To summarize, Bechamp taught that one, cane sugar was a proximate principle unalterable by solution in water. So yeah, just water alone doesn't alter the cane sugar. Two, that the air had in itself no effect upon it, but that owing to its importation of living organisms, the apparent effect of air was all important because air had the living organisms. Three, that these organisms, insoluble themselves, brought about the process of fermentation by means of the acids they generated. 
these acids were regarded as soluble ferments. Okay, and four, that the way to prevent the invasion of organisms in the sugared solution was by first lightly creosating the medium, but if the organisms had appeared before creosate was added, he showed that its subsequent addition would have no power to arrest their development and the consequent inversion of the sugar. So there you go. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go on to read. I'm on chapter 5, but I just wanted to share that. Um, well, and then she made a little chart here, the difference, like Béchamp versus Pasteur. Um, it says, who proved fermentation in a chemical medium to be due to airborne living organisms, Béchamp or Pasteur? I'm excited to get to the part of how Pasteur took it to the level of saying that these microorganisms cause disease. But uh, they said, she said here, 1857, Pasteur uh, experimented with lactic fermentation. His experiment with ferment obtained for, from a medium of sugar, chalk, casein, or fibrin and gluten, and sewn in yeast broth, in which sugar had been dissolved with the addition of chalk. Conclusions. A lactic ferment takes birth spontaneously, so he believed it was all spontaneous, as easily as beer yeast in the body of the albuminoid liquid furnished by the soluble part of the yeast. I don't understand any of this. The lactic ferment is a living being, though this conclusion is among an order of things that cannot be irrefutably demonstrated. So Pasteur felt like it couldn't be demonstrated, and Béchamp demonstrated that there was living organisms that caused this fermentation to take place. So I'm going to continue and read and hopefully get a better understanding of everything. I just wanted to share that. All right, everybody. Bye.